This video is brought to you by Brilliant.org. If you want to improve your problem solving skills and be in the community with people who like math around the world, be sure you guys go check them out. Okay, two integrals on the spot as always. Here we have the integral from 0 to 4 of the floor of x and then square. And then the second one is the integral from 0 to 4. This time, we have the floor of x squared. Of course, they are different. So, when you pause the video, when you do them, be sure you do them carefully. Okay, hopefully you guys all have a chance to try them first, and I will tell you guys the answers. The first one right here is 9d equal to 14. And then the second one, this right here is slightly more complicated, but I will write down the exact answer for you guys first. This is equal to 6t, and then we minus the sum of square root of 1, square root of 2, and then square root of 3, and then up to square root of 15. And I know a lot of you guys are about to ask, do we have a general formula for this? Name the square root of 1 plus square root of 2 plus da 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 up to square root of n. Well, I'll tell you, the formula is not so easy. You guys can check the link in the description because in this video, I just want to do integrals. Anyway, let's talk about the first one right here. And for more, you guys should definitely check out Brenda work if you guys want to see like the definition of the flow of x or the fractional part of x. And I also have other videos for similar integrals. Here we go. I will use the graphical method for you guys. So let me come up with a graph right here on the side. I just want to care about the interval from 0 to 4. So let's see, this is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4. And I will just come with a graph for flow of x. Notice that you have to do this first and then you square. So I will actually put down a square on the outside with a parenthesis just to make it super clear. So let's see, when x is 0, of course, Flow of 0 is just 0, so you have 0. And you square that, of course, still 0. Okay? And then, in fact, if you have anything between from here to here, let's say 0 0.8, flow of 0 0.8 is 0, and you square that, you still get 0. So, in fact, you get this right here. But when x is exactly 1, the so flow of 1 is 1, and you square that, you will jump to 1. Right? 1 square. And technically, let me write it down as 1 square. Okay? because this will come up pretty nicely. Anyway, I will put on an open circle and I'll put on a closed circle right here. Right, there's a jump, this continuity right there, right? Okay, anything between one and two, let's say 1.7, you put it into the flow function first. Flow of 1.7 is still one, you square that, you still get one square. So you will get this right here, and then you have an open circle. But when x is two, Flow of 2 is 2, and you square that, you get 4. So you will jump to here. Let me just put down 2 square, right? 2 square, like this. So you will jump to 4, which is 2 square, and then same thing. You will have a little horizontal line. And then when x is 3, you will jump to 9, which is 3 square, right? So I will just put down this right here. This is 3 square, and then we have a, once again, a jump, and then this right here. And this is the end, so even though when x is 4, you end up with 16, but seriously, this right here is the end of the interval of the integration. Well, well, once we have this, what do we do? Yes, we just look at the area under the curve. How nice is this, right? So you just focus, focus on these guys. First, I will write this down right here for you guys. The integral from 0 to 4 of the flow of x, and then we square, and then dx. This right here, well, first, there's no area. So if you look at this. The width is just 2 minus 1, which is 1, times the height, which is 1 square. Right? Let me just put on 1 square. And then next, once again, from here to here, the width is 1, but the height is 4, which is 2 square. So we just have the area to be 2 square. And then the next one is 3 square. How nice is this? Yes, this is the sum of the first three squares. And of course, you can do whatever you want. You can use the formula, or you can just do this in your head. You end up with 14. Right, so that's pretty much it. However, I just want to show you guys something really cool. Because sometimes if you don't want to compute this, right, the concrete way, right, the sum, you can actually change that to uh, integral, 
and then you do the integral if you would like on the computer or something. Well, anyway, let me just write down a note for you guys. If you want to get 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square and so on up to n square, this is what we do. I will integrate from, in fact, from 0 to 1, there's no area. So I don't need to go from 0. I will just say from 1. Well, when we had 4 earlier, this was 3 square. So I should put down n plus 1. And then here we have the floor of x, and you square that, dx. This will give you 1 square plus 2 square plus 3 square plus da 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 up to n square. And yes, we do have a very nice formula for this. And you guys can check out Max's video. I will have the link in the description. He show us how to derive this. We'll end up with n times n plus 1 times 2n plus 1 all over 6. Right? So I'm going to leave it to you guys. And now let's talk about how we can tackle this integral. Well, of course, I'll still use the graph for you guys. So let's come up with a graph for the floor of x squared. And based on this, we will have to do the x squared first, right? Based on the order of operations. All right, so let's see. When x is 0, 0 squared is 0, and then take the floor of 0, it's of course still 0. That's good. And up to when x is 1 right here, for example, well, anything between, when you have x squared, if x is in between of 0 and 1, you will still get less than 1 and take a full of that, you still get 0. So this right here is like this again. Right? So close and open. Now, when x is 1, you put it here, 1 squared is 1, and full of 1 is still 1, so you have 1 right here. right? So that's nice, and you can come here and then just fill in that circle. But this time, we don't have a little horizontal line all the way up to 2. Because when you have x is 2, you end up with 2 squared, which is 4, and then 4, 4 is 4. There's a big jump. No. This horizontal line is only good up to square root of 2. Why? Because if you put square root of 2 into x, square root of 2 square is 2. And you take the floor of 2, you have 2. So you have to pay attention to the x value once we hit square root numbers. So when we have square root of 2, there is an open circle, and then the graph is jumped to 2 right here. So I'll just put this down right here for you guys, like that. Right? So that's pretty much the idea. And now, we are going to have a little horizontal segment again. But this time, once again, we don't go up to the next whole number. But in fact, we go from square root of 2 to square root of 3, right? So I will just mark it right here. This is square root of 3. And the deal is that, in fact, each every time, this horizontal like length are getting shorter and shorter. Because the difference between this and that, and this and that, and then the next square root and the previous square root is getting smaller and smaller. Square root of n minus square root of n minus 1. Right? That's pretty much the idea. Anyway, you will see the picture will look like this, an open circle. And when x is square root of 3, you put it here, you get square root of 3 squared, which is 3. And then you will have root of 3, which is 3. And that will be nice. And then, in fact, square root of 3 is about 1.7 something. And you go up to the next square root number is technically square root of 4. I know that's 2, but let me write down square root of 4. So that's pretty much the idea, and each time it's going to get smaller, smaller, and smaller, right? So that's pretty much it. And then in the end, we are going to hit 16 instead of the square root, which is 4, right? So perhaps I'll also look at the 1 as square root of 1. So for the x values, when you have x squared right here as your input, it should look at the square root numbers for the x values. And then you are going to get all the y values from 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, up to 15. Because when x is square root of 15, put it here, you end up with, let me just mark it here, this is 15. Oh, you guys cannot see, but yeah, it's 15 it's up there, right? Perhaps I just, 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 just imagine this is 15, right? Just, just imagine. And it's going to be really tiny right here up to this point. So that, that's the idea. And you guys can see a better picture on the screen now, right? So 
That's the idea. Well, well, so we are going to see how we can formulate the area now. All right, so first thing first, there's no area. So you're just looking for the area for the rest, right? And I'm not going to draw the rest of the reticles. Anyway, the integral from 0 to 4 of the flow of x squared dx, this is equal to no area, the next one. Well, this time the width is what? Square root of 2 minus square root of 1, right? That's the width. And then the height is 1. So I'll put down 1 times square root of 2 minus square root of 1. And the next, this width is square root of 3 minus square root of 2. And then the height is 2. So I'll put down plus 2 times square root of 3 minus square root of 2. And then the next one is this minus that for the width and then 3 for the height, right? So you put down 3 times square root of 4 minus square root of 3 and so on, so on, so on, of course. Notice that what, was, what I was saying is these values, they are getting smaller and smaller, right? You can check. This is smaller than that. And yeah. All right. So perhaps we'll do the last one right here as well. So just put on plus dot, dot, dot. And then the last one, you guys can imagine, it's going to be 15. The y value is 15 times square root of 16 minus square root of 15, right? And I keep all the square roots because I want to have the consistent form. Anyway, now, in fact, we can simplify this pretty nicely because if you look at this, this is just square root of 2 minus square root of 1. And this right here, you, you distribute the 2, which is 2 square root of 3 minus 2 square root of 2. And then this right here is plus 3 square root of 4 minus 3 square root of 3. And of course, so on. And look at the first three terms right here, right? This, this, that. Well, I have a positive square root of 2, and this is minus 2 square root of 2. So this can be gone, and then this becomes minus square root of 2, right? This stays, right? So this right here stays. I'll just circle that. Well, this can be gone because we can come up with that. So this is gone now, and this right here becomes negative square root of 3. So yeah. So this stays, this stays, and this stays. This one is the only one left if you only have the first three terms, all right? Well, we don't have the first three terms. We have more until this. Well, if you distribute this, you know we'll have 15 square root of 16. And then, well, when you do negative, this times that, which is 15 minus, sorry, negative 15 times square root of 15, like that, right? As you know, somebody in the front right here can be reduced, so you end up with negative square root of 15 only. So this right here will stay just like this earlier. So that's the idea. Therefore, when you just kind of combine everything together, unfortunately, this is not like the telescoping series, right? It's not like everything cancel nicely, but it's still a pretty cool cancellation. The last one that stays, which is this, and 15, times square root of 16, of course, that's 15 times 4, which is 60. And this right here is 60, so let me put this down, 60. And then everybody has the negative sign. So I'll just put down a negative. And then for the inside of the parentheses, I will just write down this right here is square root of 1, and then this becomes positive, so it becomes the sum, just like what I told you over there. And then you just pretty much write it down up to square root of 15, right? Whew, this is very cool. So hopefully you guys all like this video, and if you guys really have more questions to practice with, I will highly recommend you guys go check out Boolean.org. Especially now, they have this new feature called the Daily Prompts, which is designed to help you to make learning a new daily habit for you guys, especially for this new year. If you have 10 minutes in between your classes, or maybe on your break, go ahead, download the app so you can work out your questions. And their questions are interesting, creative, and also challenging. You guys are going to love it. And if you guys would like to just do more questions, there are more questions for you guys to select. And if you guys have stuck with some questions, you guys can go join the community page, 
where there are people who also like math, they also like to contribute the solutions for you guys as well. So be sure you guys go check them out. I will have the link in the description for you guys. And if you guys would like to sign up for the annual premium subscription, so that way you guys can get the access to all of their courses, be sure you guys use the link brilliant.work slash blackpinkrepent. This way you guys can get 20% off discount for the annual premium subscription, which is really cool. Anyway, hopefully you guys all enjoyed this. And as always, that's it.